One second, you two. One second. <clears throat> How the fuck are you cool cobras doing this fine evening? I've been working on my wands like crazy. Getting another batch done for Etsy. I'm going to have to gather some spray paint so I can finish the handles and what have you. To speed up the production of my wands, I've decided to do the top halves of them painted, at least, before I do the handles and then podge them. Got the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and white wand painted. I need more black spray paint. I need more hunter green spray paint. I need some golden art spray paint. And I need some shiny golden, shiny silver chrome paint. I'll make a trip to Ace Hardware after I get my um, package. Got a notice from FedEx saying, Sorry, we missed you. The door is locked. You can have us just leave the package on your doorstep if you sign for it. I have no idea what the fuck it is. Could be an awesome fan sending me another awesome care package. You never know. Try to be optimistic about it at least. Now, in order to mix this can of Monster with this beer into a cup, I need to drink this malt liquor down to about here. Which, that's not going to be a problem. And they have this new technology on the lid. Or did I say the lid? I meant to say the label. They got this new technology on the label that lets you know when it's cold. Because apparently you can't just tell by touching the bottle and going, huh, well, that feels pretty cold, I wonder. I mean, 7.5 is a respectable amount. It's not high up, but it's enough to um, feel something. And I fancy some old English mixed with some modern stuff. That sounds delicious. I would used to finish all my wands one at a time before moving on to the next one. But to speed up production of my wands, I figured out a system to make it go just a little bit quicker. And I can assure you the next batch of wands is just is gonna look just as good as the last batch. I already have one wand done for the third batch. Uh. And, um, I'll get the handles done on the ones that I've painted, and then I'll carve out the rest of them. Let's see, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, white. That's seven wands to handle, plus the one that I've already got done. I figured out a way where I can have three to four wands drying at a time in my vice clamp. If I do the first halves, I'll go with the top half of the wand first, and then do the handle set individually for each one. That will cut dry time 
immensely. I was able to crank out some stuff from my wands in like three or four hours. More wands, more money, more happy customers, you know. And uh, I've been getting the system down to where I can get my wands sold on Etsy. I got that part figured out. The last thing I wanted to figure out was a system where I could just crank them out like a Model T and get it done. Make like Nike and just do it. I'm going to spit some knowledge on you for a second here, YouTube. I'm not here to gripe or bitch about the dating scene. I'm here to give you my insight, my perspective, and my two cents. So I met this chick who has a lot in common with me. She's pretty cute, and she seems to like me. And first thing she sees is that her three very large dogs love the shit out of me. Second thing is she's in a relationship she's not happy with. And third thing is she seems to like me as a homie, which is a good start. And the fourth thing is this is just a really cool chick to talk to, you know what I'm saying? But then I find out that if she breaks up with her current boyfriend or whatever, that she's going to go full on lesbian. Uh, according to her, it's just slim pickings here in town. And I'm sitting here like, okay, your so-called dog, Lily, is looking the shit out of my face. Which is something she doesn't do for everybody, let alone strange guys that she's never met. Now, I know how it is when you're in a relationship, you're afraid to leave. You'll put up with small, minor things, overlook a lot of... Miniature details. You know, especially if, if, if the person provides companionship or helps pay for the bills. A lot of people will put up with that person's f flaws and just to, uh, you know. You might have like maybe one or two or three things in common with that person. But it's not it's not a guaranteed match. <laughs> you know, and talking with her and hanging out with her was a lot of fun. Easy to talk to and holy shit easy on the eyes. <laughs> but then she starts going off about how if she breaks up with her current boyfriend, she's going to go full on lesbian. And I'm like, oh, that's just a definite, it ain't gonna happen. She just sees you as a homie, that's it. Which I'm cool with that. Here's the thing, Slick. If you ain't getting laid, you ain't getting pussy, you ain't getting a girlfriend, sometimes having female friends is better than nothing. It's some form of female companionship. Even if it's not intimate or physical, it's still emotional, which is better than nothing. You know. Next thing I'm going to say, if you're going to a bar with your mates and your friends and what have you, and fucking, you have a couple of chicks with you in your group, that helps the single guys out in your group immensely. Because if you walk into a bar full of people that don't know your fucking sorry ass face, and if, you see, if other chicks see you talking with chicks in your group, and to them it's like a mutual understanding, like, oh, if those chicks are talking to him, then he must be cool. Even if they don't know the chick personally, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a security reassurance, if you will. And this kind of rule applies to both sexes. So if you have single friends in your group and you're trying to get some at a bar, it helps to have members of the opposite sex in your group. So a lot of guys are like, ugh, friend zoned again? The fuck is this shit? Okay, getting friend zone sucks, but it has its advantages. 
especially when you do get a girlfriend and that so-called chick you've been friends with for a couple months to a year or whatever, all of a sudden she's like, oh, fuck, I see what I missed out on. Cobras are like any other poisonous snake. They don't want to waste their venom. So quite often they'll save it for their prey if they're hunting. Although I wouldn't test it if I I love cobras. They're an awesome snake. Don't get me wrong. But if I had if I seen a wild cobra in the in the jungle, if I didn't have any weed to smoke with it, but that's on my bucket list. I want to smoke weed with a king cobra. I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks. I want to grow my own fucking hybrid strain and then smoke it with a king cobra. It's on my bucket list. King Cobra's chronic. Oh, good lord. This weed would f fuck you up. You take black magic, green crack, mix those two together, and then you mix fruity OG Kush with rainbow Kush, and then you mix those four that create the two offspring, you mix those two together that creates one strain. You take that one strain and you mix it with King Bud OG, which will make the buds like as big as your fucking head. And then you take the offspring of that plant and you mix it with Maui Waui and Durban Poison. And then you mix those two with the offspring of that plant with some Guji Golden Cobra. And you mix all these fucking weed strains together into one beautiful fucking strain. Oh my god. This shit would fuck you up. Really strong sativa with a slight indica presence. Best goddamn bud you ever fucking smoked, man. One fucking hit, you'd be retarded. Two hits, you'd be stupid. Three hits, you'd probably be like, Whoa, dude. Fuck. This is killer bud, man. Can't do it right now. Fucking fourth hit, you'd be like, what is life? Straight up, I'd grow the fucking strongest weed I could. The fucking weed that would knock cancer on its Asperger's. Senior citizens would benefit from legal marijuana. A lot of them have arthritis and joint discomfort and shit like that and cataracts and Alzheimer's and shit like that. And these are things that marijuana can be used to treat. And there's a reason why Big Pharma don't want it legal because it's making them money to keep the rest of us sick. When genetic pills are only enough to get you what you need when name brand gets the job done. They do that on purpose, mind you. That's just one of many conspiracies. Open your eyes, people. Don't be a fucking sheep. Uh, being single does suck because it gets lonely. I will admit that. But this gives you time to work on yourself and enjoy the things you enjoy doing. Now, for example, I enjoy playing guitar, singing, listening to music, playing music, making music, making YouTube videos, making wands. Drinking, hanging out with friends, having a good time, living life for the moment, you know. <clears throat> now, if cobras don't waste their venom when they bite, then why waste your fucking time? Make like a cobra on the dating scene. Wait for the right time to strike. Because when that strike is critical and you strike at the right moment, oh yeah. Some things in life are just worth waiting for. You know, I've had sex with like seven different girls. I know what I like. I like the ladies. You know, a lot of motherfuckers talking shit because I'm confident with who I am as a person and it makes me laugh. Hey, I got some fine taste in women, I will say that. <laughs> and don't, don't let anybody tell you that your standards are too high. Fuck that shit. Like, if the person is 18 years of age or older... And that's the only, that's the only thing. Other than that, don't let anybody tell you, other than that, don't let anybody fucking tell you 
your standards are too high. You know what I'm saying? Because that's bullshit. People are like, oh, well, you have Asperger's, Mr. Saunders. You're not allowed to have standards. You're a social retard. <laughs> and you know what's funny? The chick I was hanging out with was like, oh, he has Asperger's, but he socializes with people and, you know, this and that. So she was like getting into it. And then I showed her the wand I made, which is this one right here. She was all taking a look at it like, oh, this is cool shit. Hell yeah. I guess I'm not nerdy enough for her taste, but that's all right, you know. I prefer having chick friends to, to guy friends, honestly. <laughs> But I've had several chicks flirting with me kind of hard lately, and I'm not complaining in the slightest. Even if it's not getting me late, at least chicks are taking notice. That's better than when I was growing up, I'll tell you that right now. Fuck, when I was growing up, I thought I'd never get laid. And then by the time I'm 27, I've already had sex with seven different chicks. I'm like, oh man, life's full of surprises. I went to the doctor and got tested for STDs and I came out clean and I'm like, yeah, I get it. Not a very pleasant process. They stick this fucking Q-tip in your dick hole and they pull it out and they stick it on a test strip and they send it into a lab and then you get the test results. Which I wasn't worried about it, to be honest, because I'm smart. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people... Sex is like a cigarette. It can be very easy to crave, but it can have disastrous consequences if you do it too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, motherfuckers be like, oh, I'm lonely, boo-hoo, I need to find someone to fuck real quick, uh, you know. And as soon as they start thinking like that, they don't give a fuck where they get it from. They'll just get it and get it, you know what I'm saying? And you need to give a fuck where you get it from because that's how you avoid catching shit. Now, could you imagine you never had sex for the first time and your first time having sex, you catch an STD. Oh, dude, that would suck so fucking hard. Man, that would ruin sex for a lot of people, dude. I'm just saying. I try going asexual, but there's too many attractive women in Casper. So I guess remaining somewhat abstinent and having a bit more patience and more confidence in working on myself and that sort of thing, that pays off in the end. A case in point, like, sometimes you gotta go a couple weeks without drinking. Been there, done that, it sucks. But when you, when you do get to drink, it's worth the wait. And waiting for a girlfriend's no fucking different, you know. I mean, there's steps you gotta take, you know what I'm saying, to get to that point. I will say this, though. There are motherfuckers who spend days at the gym to maintain a, a disgustingly muscular physique. And I'm over here, and I, I don't even hit the gym, and I still look good. I'm just saying, like, I good genetics, man. <laughs> <coughs> oh, shit. And this is just about to monster mixing point. Drinking enough malt liquor so that I can mix the entire can <coughs> of the goodness with it. I love giving monster free advertisement because that's the favorite right there. Love that black and green can. I want to get some green monster claws tattooed right here on my bicep right here. A Cradle of Filth band logo right here in black filled in with Hunter Green. And I want to get my Aussie knuckles touched up on the black. Get some demon wings on my back. But I'm quite content with the ink that I got right now. This Cobra I got down here in Casper at Black Sunday, and they do an awesome job. My first tattoo, I got at McGoth Tattoo, McGoth Tattoo Parlor in Valley City. That's what's up. That shit still looks fucking fresh, yo. Get it? I've seen some voodoo symbols that have the top half of my symbol on it, legitly. And some Celtic symbols that look very similar to it. So people want to be like, oh, it looks like this and that. <sighs> Shit. I'm 
I'm quite content with my own religion. I love it. I've been practicing it for years, and it's what I believe in, and it gives me spiritual guidance. And when I have the proof to back it up, like, I love showing off my powers for people. That's one of my favorite things to do. It's to walk up to a street light and just start fucking with it, waving my wand at it, watching it turn on and off repeatedly. To the amazement of people, like, okay, this motherfucker... Magic is might. Remember that, YouTube. I practice a combination of stuff, really. My own little special blend of stuff. And it works for me. I don't go around shoving it in people's faces. As far as anybody else is concerned, I'm just having fun showing off my powers. That ain't illegal. Freedom of religion. I'll drink to that. So it's Monster, the official sponsor of Skillet. I'm just kidding. That was a horrible song reference. No, but shout out to Farfinger Death Punch. I heard they put on one hell of a concert. I didn't get a chance to go see it because I didn't have a phone to get a hold of people. Um, but nonetheless, I was hanging out with a chick either way. So even if I missed a concert, I'm still hanging out with a chick. So I still had a fun time, you know. I found out you can't crossbreed a blue great wee mare with a blue nose pit. That'd be a pretty dog, but that has a lot of birth defects from crossbreeding. What's a blue great wee mare, you ask? That's a blue great dane mixed with a whiner miner. That's a sweet looking dog, man. I would adopt from a shelter before I'd buy from a breeder, but if I was to buy from a breeder, I'd buy a blue great wee mare. Blue great wee mares are the shit. Winer Miner Blue Grey Dane Mix. Dude. Gorgeous fucking dog. But I'd much rather adopt from a shelter. I'd, I'd much rather adopt a pit bull from a shelter, to be honest. And with my Asperger's, I could legally get a therapy dog. All I have to do is fill out paperwork and turn it into my landlord. And then get a dog that's legally approved to be a therapy dog. So if I wanted a therapy dog, I could get one. But there's several dogs around town that I can go and pet anytime I want. My friends have dogs. My family has dogs. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm not worried about it. I'm kind of too broke to afford a therapy dog at the moment. And the worst part about having a dog is being too broke to feed it. That just, that's miserable, dude. And I don't care how much I love dogs. I would never put a dog through that. You know what I'm saying? That's man's best friend. Or a human's best friend, depending on how you look at it. My love for dogs can get me in trouble sometimes, though, because I remember this fucking one time. When I was in high school, my mom would pick me up. We'd drive across town to go pick up my sister from daycare. And sometimes my stepmom would take forever picking up my sister from daycare. I'd walk across the street because I'd seen this big black dog named Mud. And uh, I'd fucking play with this dog. I'd pet this dog and be like, oh, doggy, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm a natural dog lover. It is what it is, right? No idea whose dog it was. I'd just go over and pet this dog. My stepmom would take too long. One day I'm petting this dog like usual, and my high school crush and her mom driving in the front, front driveway. And my high school crush, she's looking at me like, what the fuck is this creeper doing in my yard? And I'm like, oh, fuck. I didn't know this was her house. God fucking damn it. This is why you don't pet strangers' dogs. This could have ended so much worse. Needless to say, I never went into that yard again because I already had a bad reputation. Oh, you're stalking her. Well, it's not intentional. It's a tiny-ass fucking school. You're bound to run into each other at least once or twice. Fuck. Do not speak the name. No, I shall not speak the name. Mm -mm. Nope. I know how my trolls be, and um, I don't give away the names of past high school crushes online. 
It's too much respect for the ladies and, you know, because I don't want my trolls harassing them. Finding them on social media and being like, ooh, Saunders used to like you, ooh. <laughs> okay, so I don't, I don't, I'm not complaining about it, YouTube, but at the same time, I don't quite understand it. When I was younger, chicks were kind of creeped out by me, but as I got older and more muscular, now chicks are kind of flirting with me. What the fuck happened? Usually if you're in high school and you're kind of nerdy and a bit of an outcast, if you do the best you can to survive high school and make something of yourself when you get out of high school, you might grow up to be somebody you never know. You look at Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, these motherfuckers were probably nerdy as fuck in high school. Nerdy as fuck in high school, right? And then one of them's like, fuck this shit, I don't need this noise, they fucking drop out. And now they're rich as fuck. I'm not saying that you should use that as an example to drop out of school, not quite the contrary. I like to drink and have a good time, but I graduated high school. I passed with a C. <coughs> Does the C stand for Cobra? Just kidding. <coughs> fucking excuse me. Didn't know this turned into fucking Sesame Street over here. Now, earlier, I felt myself getting angry at something. I don't remember what it was, but I tried something different. Instead of breathing for a couple minutes, I tried picturing a happy place. I pictured a field of luscious cannabis growing as wild as any tree would. And that field, you know what I'm saying, like a field full of hot-ass gothic naked women and cannabis as far as the eye can see. And even though it's unrealistic at this point, just the thought of it was enough for me to go. I feel like a real Asperger's for flipping out about some of the shit I flip out about. I've been trying to make a, a subconscious effort to work on my temper a little bit. It's not easy when you're used to flipping out about everything. Oh, you stub your toe or you fuck up on the national anthem playing, playing guitar for the social medias and... <clears throat> See my shotgun over there. Oh my god, that is sexy. <clears throat> I like semi-automatic pistols, but... That shotgun, once you get the first two shells popped off, it's pretty quick to just load two more in. Even one, just click the safety, boom. You know what I'm saying? So load time is a little bit faster because it holds less ammo. That's the only argument I made. I'm not knocking semi-automatic pistols, but... Pff, shit, I missed the pistol I had. That thing was sweet. Black and green 38 special. Mm. But I sold it to repair the first phone I broke, and then the second phone I have breaks, and I'm just like, well, ain't that about a bitch? At least I have a gun, so I'm not complaining, it's better than a sharp stick. I don't need to, I don't need to bring it out on YouTube. You all, you've all seen that, that beautiful firearm of mine. The gorgeous, sexy 12 gauge. Side by side Stoger with internal hammers. It's like five or six years old. It's my first legally purchased firearm. And when you're an avid gun collector, you, you don't give up on your first if you can help it. Shit, my granddad had a Winchester lever action that his granddad gave to him. I wanted to get my hands on, but he sold it. I'm not too bummed about it. It is what it is. That would have been cool to keep it in the family, but... Eh. Of course, when I was younger, I was allowed to have BB guns, but I've always wanted a fucking side-by-side -side shotgun. It's my favorite gun. And they're like, my parents are like, no, you can't have a gun, you know. Because, like, the thought of you with a gun scares us, you know. But then when I bought the gun, I've had it for a couple years, and I keep it empty unless I have to use it. And I made the sweetest shooting video on YouTube. That was pretty fun going out with Michael Baldwin, homeboy of mine, <coughs> popping up a couple shots. As soon as the phone died, I took aim at an empty ranch bottle, and there was still like some 
half of it was still in there and it was expired. And I popped both triggers and boom, fucker exploded. I remember when I fucking held my shotgun with one hand and shot both triggers at the same time, or one trigger after the other, I don't remember which one. Yeah, it wasn't both triggers. I remember shooting my shotgun with one hand and popping each shot off. Granted, it was bird shot, but it was still kind of badass. I mean, yeah. Man. Fuck suicide, because then I can't shoot my gun off for fun. Fuck mass shootings, because then I can't. You know what I'm saying? People want to make their stupid ass assumptions. Oh, it's an autistic with a gun. Oh, he has autism and he owns a gun. Oh, look out. Fuck you. I am so fed up with the cliches in our society. Huey, this is just about a mixing point. But one more swig and I'll be able to mix it into me mug with some monster energy drink. Yeah. Uh. Believe it or not, my family owns a ranch in Wyoming. If you ever drive on Saunders Highway down in Gillette, that's my family's ranch. I'll drink to that. So, my roots to Wyoming are very deep. But just because I have ranch hand family doesn't mean I try to act like I'm a cowboy. You know what I'm saying? I'm a goth metalhead stoner hippie musician type. You know what I'm saying? I respect my elders and I'm a hard worker. You wouldn't think that by the way I dress. I'll go down to Colorado and smoke it when I can, man. That shit's nice. Marijuana doesn't cure my Asperger's, but it makes it easier to deal with. And the fact that the United States flag, the very first United States flag, was sewn from a hemp sail from a colonial ship. And you want to sit here and tell me that marijuana is illegal. You want to sit here and tell me that our troops can't even smoke it for their fucking PTSD. That marijuana cures bone cancer in children by using cannabis oil. And pedophiles are getting less prison time than somebody busted for a marijuana roach. The shit pisses me off. How is a fucking plant that has so much medical benefit and so much potential for our economy illegal when our first president, George fucking Washington, had the biggest pot farm in the nation? This is shit they don't tell you in school, so they can tell you, kids, you shouldn't try marijuana because it's a gateway drug. <laughs> Fuck that. Okay, some people have addictive personalities. And when children are lied to about pot, they're like, <laughs> peer pressure gives in. They're like, yo, this weed ain't so bad. Why the fuck they lie to us about this, man? Shit, I don't know. What else did they lie to us about? Yeah. And if you lie to kids about that, they're more inclined to try other things because of that lie. Duh. And then you got peer pressure and addictive personalities. And then if you're buying drugs off a dealer off the street, they're like, you're, you're having a bad day. You just want to get high and escape life for a couple minutes. Relax and enjoy yourself. Dealer says, well, I'm out of weed, man, but you want to try some of this other shit? <clears throat> Next thing you know, you're hooked on something else. And then conveniently enough, marijuana gets labeled as a gateway drug. That's fucking... Oh, dude. I could smell the bullshit from here. Drink combo time. They want people to be like, oh, you can't drink that straight. I enjoy a mixed drink, but I can drink my shit straight. I like my beer like I like my women with good head. Oh, this guy. That's too much. I never said my channel was for kids now.
You know what's funny when you have a girlfriend that's never had her pussy eaten out or licked before and the first time she has her pussy eaten, she gives you the opportunity and she enjoys the fuck out of it. And then she fucks up breaking up with you and then she's trying to get back with you. That shit's just mm, so fucking delicious. Like, oh, you had something good. I'm not going to name names because I don't need to be giving my personal business away, but shit. I'm just saying, you two. It's like a bloody game of poker, I don't know when to hold them and when to fold them. And when you're having a shitty streak of luck in the dating scene, sometimes you gotta fold your hand and kinda play it cool for a minute, work on yourself, enjoy what you can in life, make the best of it, you know, that kind of shit. Fucking Alcoholic wisdom. No, but seriously, this cup is like halfway full of malt liquor and now we the party gets started, baby. Crack it open a fresh can of monster. Show that whoa shit, show that logo. Almost dropped it. Damn Cobra, get your shit together. That might have been overacted just a little bit, but no seriously. Monster and beer, get it. No fear. Oh fucking hell, it's delicious. As soon as I poured half of that in there, the fucking head on that was like, Whoa. It was like a mad scientist experiment. Like, ooh, look at the foam. That's like the one fish on Finding Nemo. Bubbles! My bubbles. You do realize that I open my packages before I unbox them. So if it's a troll package, I throw it away and don't even give it an unboxing video. But, like, if it's a legit awesome care package, then I'll make a video unboxing it. You see what I'm saying? I'm not going to give these trolls the satisfaction of me getting pissed off at the stupid shit they send me in the mail. That's what they want. I'm just like, nah, dude. I'm not going to play the challenge games. They want to continue to talk shit on me and make me more famous on YouTube with their negativity and their bullshit and their bullying. That's fine. If I'm the only one that suffers, I get more views because of it. Who gives a shit? Marvel, next issue, please. <coughs> oh. Excuse me. Look at that, I picked up a big lighter that has the Liberty Bell right on it. That's fucking sick. So I heard Charlie Sheen's favorite bell was the Liberty Bell. Why do you say that? Oh, because of the giant crack. <laughs> oh. I mean, people make jokes about celebrities doing drugs all the fucking time, but quite often society feeds into it to an extent, you know. People expect the rock stars and the musicians to be total druggies and boozers and, you know. I mean, you don't need drugs or booze to make good music, but shit. If you're doing softcore drugs in a responsible environment and you're being smart about it, who the fuck cares? You're not providing the miners and they're natural, organic, they come from Mother Earth. Who the fuck cares, right? Like, I don't see why the fuck psychedelic mushrooms aren't legal either for that matter. Well, they can grow on cow shit, but if you pick them and dry them out and eat them, that's illegal. You can pick them and study them for a science experiment, but if you eat them and consume them to experience the psychedelic, the psychedelic effect, that's illegal. Why, are we having, why do we have wars over plants? 
why is it natural cocaine, salvia, DMT, all the stuff that gets you high naturally, like the organic shit, legal, fuck crack. Cocaine's a natural plant. It was in a Coca-Cola. That was America's first energy drink. Eh? I'll drink to that. They're just like, oh, well, that's illegal to have cocaine in your Coca-Cola, so we're going to make it illegal. Like, well, people still got to have a pep in their step when they drink it. That's why they drink it. Well, let's use sugar and caffeine. Okay, that works. Same effect on a much smaller scale. But did you know that natural cocaine in small doses is a lot healthier than caffeine and sugar? Well, that's shit they don't tell you. See, if it's a plant that comes from Mother Earth, it's, doing, it's worth doing some research. This is shit they don't tell you so they can say, oh, don't do drugs, you know. Drugs are bad, but, oh, here, you're in so much pain. Here, take a morphine pill. Oh, wait, you have a cold. Drink some Vicks. You'll be fine. Oh, you have a headache? Here, take a fucking aspirin. And what the fuck is up with these drug commercials? Talk to your doctor if side effects worsen. And as soon as that part in the commercial comes up, they're trying, to, they're trying so goddamn hard to distract you. Here's a peaceful beach. Here's somebody playing with a dog. Here's a happy couple in a sunset. Talk to your fucking doctor if side effects worsen. As if they're saying, okay, we know taking this shit isn't going to make your symptoms any better. It might cure the shit you have, but it's going to give you 10,000 symptoms you don't fucking need. But we'll try to ease your mind by showing some serene, peaceful background. Yeah. Side effects may include... <laughs> Fuck. I noticed that making wands for Etsy makes me money, so I got another batch cooking up as we speak. That batch is looking good. Well, what's the first wand look like? Well, the first wand in my batch has no paint, just straight Mod Podge and a handle. And then I offer the same style of wand in different sizes and different colors. All the colors are pretty much a standard set, but the sizes are unpredictable. The shape's random, you know. And each batch comes in a selection of that's how much is in that batch. Once they're gone, they're gone. That makes them a bit more exclusive. People are seeing videos of me practice magic on YouTube, and then they see me selling wands. Instant selling point. I got damn near 7,000 subscribers. Get it. That much closer. Mm. That's a dank ass drink combination. And I made a Cobra's English with the whiskey added to it. But, but I don't have whiskey, so I don't know what the fuck to call it. Just malt liquor and monster. Fucking. Yeah. Get the downer effect from the alcohol and the stimulant from the caffeine is quite marvelous. Oh, you're not crafting wands, you're full of shit. <laughs> okay. Look what I have in my hands right here. Ready to have handles added to them. Look at all these wands that I carved out. I think I'm playing. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, white. That leaves a black wand, and then the gold and silver, the silver and gold wand, and then the glow in the dark wand, and the crystal scepter. So that's practically five wands left in the batch to carve. Most of them already halfway painted and done. Now the only one I managed to finish in the batch so far would be this one. 
No paint, no mods, just straight handle. That one turned out quite nice. I'm seeing people make wands out of chopsticks and mache paper and hot glue, and I'm like, I use real sticks for mine. I could show you how to make a wand, but I'm not going to. I don't want to affect my business, but I will say that it takes a lot of cutting, sanding, and a lot of minor detail to pull off the finished product. You know what I'm saying? Not bad for somebody who doesn't go to the gym. I'm just saying, look at these arms. <laughs> Ladies, look at these abs. <laughs> Get it. That was strictly for my female fans. What's good? Stop letting words offend you. People have called me a retard since I started making YouTube videos. Like I called a fucking retard growing up in school. And I've decided I'm not going to let it offend me. I have high functioning autism, which is a form of retardation, so I'm going to own up to it. Like, yeah, I'm retarded, so what? I'm socially retarded, what's your point? I don't care. I'm living my life for me, what the fuck's your, your deal, you know? Stop letting words offend you, and then they don't have the power to quote-unquote offend you. You say words like cunt, fuck, retard, shit, piss, f you know. People are like, oh, such foul language. Oh, my ears. That's your problem right there. You're letting those words offend you. As soon as you stop letting those words offend you, your life will be so much easier. They're just words, man. There is so much bigger issues going on in the world around us. And you want to sit there and get offended because someone said cunt. Wow. I mean, I hate the fact that men and women are treated unfairly in society, but I can't do anything about it. All I can do is bitch about it, so. Hey, bartender, my drink's empty. That can be fixed. But you know what's funny? YouTube. The chick I made friends with recently that I was hanging out with her the other day. She's like, well, maybe the reason why he has a hard time getting a girlfriend is because he wears a large-ass dog collar and this and that. Now, I appreciate the, uh, the woman's interpretation of it, but here's the thing. I shouldn't have to change who I am as a person just to get some goddamn pussy. You either accept me for who I am or you don't. If you don't, if you can't accept me for who I am, then you're not worth my time. If you can't accept me for who I am, then you're not worth my time. Plain and simple. Plain and fucking simple. A lot of people pretend to be people they aren't, just so they can get some. 
It's like, what kind of life is that? Wouldn't you be much happier with somebody who accepts you for who you are? And you're both sexually and mentally attracted to each other and it, it just works, you know? Wouldn't that be a much happier relationship than, you know, pretending like, okay, I'll, I'll overlook the things I don't like about this person just to say that I'm not alone or I'll pretend to be in this person's relationship, just blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? What keeps me going despite getting rejected? Here's the thing, getting rejected is a part of life. You're gonna get rejected by chicks, you're gonna get rejected by colleges you apply for, jobs you apply for, apartments that you apply for. Rejection is a part of life. You can't avoid it, YouTube. <clears throat> you apply for a job that you want so badly and the community and the job rejects you and the community surrounding it rejects the idea. The snobbery in fine arts, that really fucking pisses me off. Like, who the fuck are you to judge what fine art is? Art is a personal interpretation. Art is a form of expression. <coughs> so if it's digitally manipulated, who gives a shit? It's still a form of expression. <coughs> <coughs> there are some people in the fine art community who feel like, oh, well, you Photoshop that photo. That's not real art. That's technology used. Blah, blah, blah. Isn't art supposed to be a form of personal expression? And if that's the true definition of art, then who gives a fuck what media you use? The snobbery just... <sighs> Next drink, please. Ha 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 ha. I'm not going to fucking show you how I finish my wands. Because other people will be like, Oh, now I know how to make them. Magicians should not reveal their secrets too much, at least. Even if I did show you how to make a wand, a basic handheld wand, people are still going to buy them for me because it's the thought of buying them from this guy, right here. Shit, there are motherfuckers who bust their ass at the gym to maintain their good looks. And I look this good, I don't even have to go to the gym. I love it. I fucking love it. One of these days, I'm going to win the lottery, build my dream house, I'll be set. <laughs> yes. Not complaining about my current circumstances, but one of these days, you know, you never know. Life's full of surprises. But if my girlfriend tries grounding me from sex, I'm like, shit, that ain't gonna work. I've gone a whole year without it. By the end of the day, I guarantee you she'll be giving it to me because all I gotta do is be as sexy as I possibly fucking can. She gives it to me and then I'm like, well, I thought I was grounded from sex. Well, what, what, what happened here? And she'd be like, shut up, you know what you did. I didn't do shit. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about.
Like, nah. You know what I'm saying? There's a number of reasons why women reject me. One of the suckiest reasons is being attractive. Attractive people are harder to approach. It feels like that, at least, because they're attractive in your eyes. You know, and that's just how it is. Being a YouTube celebrity, having autism, all these things don't help me on the dating scene, but they can also work in my favor if I play my cards right. Shit, you think just because you're fat or unattractive you can't find somebody? <laughs> That's a load of horse shit. Like, what the fuck is stopping you? Okay, so you're a little bit overweight and society says you're unattractive. Fuck society. You find somebody who's into fat people, get over it. Or you sit on the couch and complain about it. Or you lose weight and find you somebody. Really, you have three to four options to make your life happen for you. What the fuck's stopping you? The first step begins with you. The first goddamn step begins with you. You're sitting there saying, I don't like the way I look, or I don't like the way this or that, blah, blah, blah. You have that control, you have that power in your hands. If you don't like the way you look, you can change it. You have that power. You have that motivation within you. You just gotta reach down deep inside and pull it out from the depths of your soul and find that motivation to kick some ass and take some names. And sometimes that life motivation doesn't come overnight. Sometimes it takes a couple of days of being severely depressed before you're just like, no, fuck this shit. Now some friends of mine need help cleaning their some friends of mine need help cleaning their house tomorrow. And being a friend, I volunteered to help them. It's not my house, but shit gets me out of my house and it's a good deed, so you know. I've seen this shit on the news. This dude parkours four balconies to save a four-year-old from falling off the edge of the apartment building. That was a major story. It could have been any fucking number, but okay, he had to climb four stories to save a four-year-old. I'm like, okay, you gotta be fucking, it's a heartwarming story. But I'm like, at the same time, you, you gotta be fucking kidding me. He just had to climb four stories to save the kid. And the kid happened to be four years old. That's a coincidence if I ever saw one. Like, you, you, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Life's a trip sometimes, man.
Oop, screensaver mode. Cool thing about my screensaver is I can play my iTunes collection from my screensaver. But I'm not looking to do that right now. There we go. Can crush all my awesome subscribers. Show that logo. Now I have two wands to mail off as fan-made gifts. I'll get those mailed off as soon as I can. But um, when you're mailing a wand that you made for a celebrity, it can be rather difficult to get it to that celebrity, which is understandable. Be the last of my monster and the last of that drink and this goblet of awesomeness right here. <laughs> Come to find out, the chick I was hanging out with the other day, she plays guitar. Uh, you, do you have any idea how sexually frustrating that is? When you find a chick you have so much in common with and she's not even interested. God damn it, that is, oh dude, that is so frustrating. You want to just beat your head against a glass window repeatedly. But it wouldn't be enough. to fucking compensate for how frustrating it is. Like, ah, dude, that is some bullshit. That's life, though. It's unfair. You know, you, you can't predict when life's going to be fair and not fair, you know? You really can't. So even though you're dealt a shitty hand, you try to fucking make the best of it, you know. That's all you can do. Sitting on the porch, 
of my dream house. The shotgun next to me, smoking a pipe, rocking in my chair, enjoying the fine summer weather. Just that thought alone, it keeps me going. I could win enough money to build my dream house one of these days, you never know what life's got in store for you because you haven't lived it yet. <coughs> uh, straight up, you, do, you really don't know what life has in store for you because you haven't lived it yet. I seem to have acquired the hiccups for a brief moment. Okay. I say brief moment because they've gone away. Although when you consume a lot of alcohol in one sitting, of course you're going to get the fucking hiccups. Drink combo videos. I call this drink combination a cool cobra. If you're mixing malt liquor, malt liquor with monster energy drink, it's called a cool cobra. Yeah. These chicks want to reject me, that's their loss. I get a cult following on YouTube and they want to reject me, that's their fucking loss, man. <laughs> oh. Even if you don't have what I have on social media, that's how you gotta be when you get rejected. Yeah, they're lost, not mine. That's the kind of mentality that gives you the strength to continue. Drink combination just about done, just like this video. Yeah, thank you all for tuning into this drink combination video. But drink combination, what's he, what's he combining? Oh, old English and monster. Mm. 
That's tasty. Drank my goblet like a big boy. <laughs> no, but that's how you do it, YouTube. We'll drink combo video. All kinds of crazy shit be happening in a drink combo video. Smoking's bad for you. <laughs> Kiss my ass, burgers. So is it too much exercise and extreme amounts of narcissism? But people do that too. What's your point? <laughs> oh, would you look at that? He's smoking. Yeah, I'm also jerking off here. You want some hair gel? You want some goddamn hair gel or what? Uh, ben Stiller and your dice clay reference right there. <laughs> Some people are like, I don't get why that's so fucking funny. But I'm like, dude, really? Cultural references is... If you understand cultural references, then you're a stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> That and this is a good cigarette. Yeah, thank you all for watching my drink combination video. Finish this, this here cigarette. Finish this video. Thank you all for watching my drink combination video.
Yep. That's how you mix the good stuff right there, I tell you what. Anyways. Thank you for watching this random fucking video. If you like this kind of content, subscribe for more awesome content. Anyways, thank you for watching. And I hope you all have a wonderful evening. King Cobra JFS back at you with another drink combination. I'll catch you cool Cobras on the flip side. Yeah.